Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Devil Saviour DS-03 Compressor, also known of course as the third party masterpiece representation of Overload based on his Revenge of the Fallen movie appearance. Now if you are in the market for picking Overload up, he is available and in stock right now over at Heat Toy and for that of course I will leave a link down in the description box below where you can of course add him to your collection. Now out of all of the Constructicons to be released by Devil Saviour, Overload has got to be one of the more intriguing as much like when Hasbro did announce they were going to be doing this character for their own Devastator, many collectors, myself included, were left wondering as to how his robot mode would indeed look, as of course Overload never actually transformed in the Revenge of the Fallen movie, and judging by some of the prototype images that were shown, it does appear as if they have followed a very similar trend to what Hasbro did in making Overload a two-legged quadruple armed force to be reckoned with. Taking a look here at the packaging, you can see that we have an amazing product shot of Overload in both robot mode as well as here in his vehicle mode. I do love the setting that they do have him in of course it is the pyramids of Giesel that we saw in the Revenge of the Fallen movie as we take a look here towards the top compressor troublemaker and spinning around here to the back of the box we have some really cool product shots of him in robot mode vehicle mode as well as of course here in his combined mode as I shall be showing you how you can combine overload to of course their most recently released giant axe so without further ado let's crack this open and see what awaits us inside and so here we have Compressor opens up and out of the packaging and of course as he comes packaged here in his construction dump truck alternate mode. Taking a look here at the details you can see that as far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned much like all of the previously released Devil Saviour products they have done a fantastic job. Now that's not to say that the figure is without his flaws as of course he does have some robot mode kibble which is slightly unsightly however due to the nature of his very abstract looking robot mode design I believe they've done a commendable job. As we take a look here towards the front section of the vehicle mode you can see some fantastic sculpt work and I love the addition of a dark black wash which has been applied over the top in order to of course bring out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. You also do get a pair of plugins here which you can actually conceal the screws with. I have decided to leave them off as they are incredibly finicky to actually insert at least here on my copy although if you do have the time and patience I'm pretty certain that you could get them wedged in there. The headlights here have also been painted and we can also see present here a silver wash once again in order to give you the sense that this vehicle is slightly webbed and battered. As we take a look here from a bird's eye perspective, I love the metallic grating detail that we have here at the top. That looks very authentic to what I personally have seen from some construction vehicles. The railing is a separate piece that you will have to plug on straight out of the packaging. However, if you follow the instructions, it is rather straightforward to do. As we take a look here towards the smokestack, this is actually an area of which the instructions point out to be very delicate. So certainly be cautious when transforming and handling this figure as I'm pretty certain this here could snap clean off. As we spin around here to the side of the vehicle mode, you can see how the cockpit has been sculpted and painted really nicely and much like we saw on their previously released giant axe I do love the incorporation of some black lining detail in order to of course bring out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. Here at the back we do unfortunately have overloads robot mode feet however due to the nature of the vehicle mode design I personally don't believe it looks all that bad at all and to me at least it does blend in with the overall construction aesthetic. As we take a look here towards the wheels these unfortunately have just been cast out of plastic and the tyres are unfortunately not rubber although the paintwork as well as the sculpt work to these these two have come out incredibly well. As we turn our attention here to the largest part of Overload's vehicle mode, here we have what I believe is the dump truck bed. You can see that as far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned, I believe this too has also come out really nicely. Unfortunately, you are able to see the faux robot mode chest here hanging on the side, and it maybe would have been nice if they could have found a way to actually reverse this so that the back of the panel was facing forward, but nevertheless, it is a minor critique for what is otherwise a really nice looking vehicle mode. As we spin our attention here to the top, of course, we do have the majority of the back of Devastator's combined form, although if they were to leave this hollow much like the real vehicle mode would have been, in my opinion that would have been wasting space and it probably would not have resulted in such a good looking robot mode as well as combined mode and I personally do believe this here to be an eye feast. I love all of the mechanical detail as well as paintwork that we have here on the top, although I'm pretty certain that many of you will not necessarily be a massive fan of this. As we take a look here towards the rear of the vehicle, unfortunately this here isn't all that sightly, however much like I mentioned when we took a look here at the feet, I do believe that it blends in rather nicely with the overall construction aesthetic. You can see that the claws of the robot mode do become this very metallic, almost steel like structure, and due to the impeccable paintwork, it definitely does look as if it has been made out of a die cast material. As we flip here to the underside, you can see that pretty much all of the robot mode kibble is concealed besides the claws, and even their purpose is rather difficult to tell when we have him here in vehicle mode. All of the wheels are indeed capable of rolling along the ground incredibly smoothly, and the figure itself is actually a rather weighty piece. So, overall, as far as he's 
alternate mode is concerned, for the most part, I'm quite impressed, especially considering that this figure here has three alternate modes, one of which is rather unusual in terms of its robot mode design, and considering this is one of the longest constructor cons that we have gotten from Devil Saviors so far, I believe they've done a pretty decent job in distributing the robot mode part across the entire figure. Here, for an overload size comparison, something which I was very surprised to see is that unlike the previously released Devil Saviour products, this particular compressor does not actually tower over the Studio Series version. Whilst of course it is still slightly bigger, it is nowhere near as big as I initially suspected. So that just goes to show how large this particular Studio Series overload was in his alternate mode. But you can see here that as far as the scaling is concerned, the version by Devil Saviour is just slightly longer. It is merely just this front section where you can see the two front wheels and it is ever so slightly taller. However, comparing the details, in my opinion, the Devil Saviour version wins hands down as the red they have used looks a lot more authentic to the movie. I also am a massive fan of the detailing here, such as the white stripes. Perhaps if the Studio Series version was painted a little better, maybe it would have had a slightly better chance of competing with this version. But at least here, in my opinion, I much prefer the look here of the Devil Saviour version when compared here to the Studio Series version. But you once again do have to factor in cost. The Devil Saviour version is significantly more expensive than compared here to the Leader Class version. Just giving you one last comparison here from the front, you can see how they look. The Devil Saviour version, once again, is a lot more detailed. And here from the side, you can see how that looks. And from a bird's eye perspective, personally, I actually do prefer the bed section here of the Devil Saviour version, as to me, the sculpted in detail is a lot more eye-pleasing than the ugly design that we got here with the Studio Series release. Turning to transformation, to begin with, you're going to want to turn your attention here to the smokestack. As mentioned previously in the review, the instructions do mention that this is an incredibly fragile piece, so I would certainly recommend to take your time whilst manipulating this. You're basically just going to want to hinge this section down and that tab will separate there from that slot and then gently wriggle it across this metal pin all the way and then just fold this section here down like so. We can then turn our attention here to the underside, unhook this section. We can then flip here to the top, take this piece here and also unhook this all the way. I would certainly recommend perhaps grabbing a flathead screwdriver as some of the pieces do tab in incredibly securely and it's just helpful to pry some of those tighter joints out of their respective pegs. So just hinge that section there up. What I would then recommend doing is taking both of the legs here and clicking them out one ratchet joint either side. Once that is done, you're then going to want to take this section, apply some pressure here to the top of the hip and essentially ratchet this here out to the side. So just to demonstrate that, you're just going to want to take this and hinge this section like so. Come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. I would then come here to the front section of the vehicle mode, take these pieces and hinge those there out of the way as this entire assembly too is also going to come all the way over the top, down like so. And then this piece here will rotate and will become the heel spur for the robot mode. What we can then proceed to do is turn our attention here to this side, of course, hinge this out of the way, take this panel, hinge this all the way around, rotate the cockpit so that once again, it does create the heel spur. We are then going to want to take the feet here, bring these down like so, rotate this joint like this, and then hinge this section around. You're then going to want to take the heel spurs, open them up like so, and then just split the front toes ever so slightly. This entire assembly will wrap over the top and this huge port will peg here into this tab. You can see how it is slightly different in terms of its design than compared to the front two. So just take this and snap that in there. Of course, turn your attention here to this side. So pull this section forward, down, take this here, rotate it to the side, hinge that out, bring the heel spurs out like so, hinge the toes, and then of course, bring this up and over and snap that there securely into place. I would then recommend to take the knee spike, hinge this section up, and of course repeat the same process here. And then the front section of the grill will indeed tab into this slot, so just compress that there, and of course repeat the exact same process. What I would then recommend you do is turn your attention here to the front, and this is certainly where I have a slight issue with the tolerances. I would recommend lifting the wheels up. The ratchet joints here for the legs, in my opinion, are way tighter than they actually need to be. I really do believe that Devil Savior went kill mode when actually creating these ratchet joints, as I'm more than certain that they could cause damage to the figure over time, but you're essentially going to want to split the legs out and then ratchet these all the way around. And I personally am really not happy with the sound of these ratchet joints. I'm almost certain that over time they are going to bust and potentially completely ruin what is otherwise a very well constructed figure. Of course, just hinge that section there down as well. You're then going to want to take this panel, disengage that as that will allow access to the knee joint. 
just like that. So ensure that everything is in an alignment like this. We can then bring the knee joints down. You're then going to want to turn your attention here to this truck bed, take the claws, hinge those out, and you can see how they will separate from those tabs and slots. You'll then want to turn your attention here to the top, take this section, pry that section open, and then take this part here, and then just pull that section out. Take this entire assembly, hinge this section here down. We can then take these pieces, pull away from the body, and hinge them out to the sides, and repeat the same process, so pull away, and hinge those out. We can then flip here to this side. You'll then want to turn your attention here to this tab and this slot. Now the instructions do mention that you do have to separate these in a very distinctive way. If you do try to just force them, you are more than likely just going to break it. So you do have to hinge this section here out to the side and then slide this down and it will cause the two halves to separate. Once that's done, we can then take the chest plate, pull this section here forward, take this entire assembly, rotate this here, off to the side, flip this here around, and bring that all the way down. Of course, repeat the exact same process here on this side. So hinge this down all the way. I have risen the camera up slightly just so that you can have a clearer visual on the top half of the transformation. So for this section, you're going to want to take this here, ratchet this down slightly, bring this section here out, take this piece, this will hinge forwards. And once that's done, this tab will peg here into this slot. So snap that into place. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. Hinge that out. Take this here. And pull this section down as well. We can then take that same tab and slot that we saw on the opposite side and clip that there into place. You're then going to want to take these shoulder sections. Once again, hinge these sections forwards and repeat the same process here on the opposite side. You can then bring this section here down. You're going to want to open this section here, pull this up, rotate this around, and that will then allow this here to extend. Bring this section down, take the wheel. You can see how it is pegged into this slot. You're then going to want to reverse it so that it pegs here into this slot. So just snap that in there securely. That will then allow us to open the pincers. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. Snap that there into place. Take this section, hinge that up, rotate that around and down, open the pincers, and then just align him up so that you can get the character to stand, ratchet those down to create a little more of a dynamic look. Pull the chest piece out, rotate the head all the way around, compress the chest, hinge these sections here out to the side so we can then take the wheels shoot those back, take the ab crunch joint, ratchet that section forwards, take the hook, and this here will come all the way over the top of Overload's head. And then finally, we can take these panels and just hinge those there out to the side. What you'll then want to do is turn your attention here to the back. And once again, I recommend bringing in that flap tip screwdriver as you're going to want to disengage this locking mechanism, fold that there to the back. And essentially, you're going to shift the entire torso here forwards, and then this locking mechanism will peg here into this tab, bring the ratchet joint forwards, and there we have Devil Saviour's compressor fully transformed up into his very unusual looking robot mode. And so taking a look here at compressor in his robot mode, this is by far one of the most menacing looking Decepticons that I have in my collection. Upon looking at this figure for the first time, Freddy Krueger immediately popped into my head as the head sculpt looks so menacing. Of course, the color scheme and the razor sharp claws. This is by far one of the deadliest looking Decepticons. And personally, it is such a shame that he did not make his debut on the silver screen. But nevertheless, we have got two really awesome figures. I was thoroughly impressed with Hasbro's version and I'm even more impressed here with Devil Saviour's version. Now, of course, as Overload never converted in the movie, there really isn't much to go by as far as movie accuracy is concerned. So regarding on whether or not the robot mode design is any good, of course, will be up to your own personal taste. But I personally love the way it looks. Bringing him in here for a closer look, of course, we have got to start off with that incredibly menacing looking head sculpt. This looks awesome. The sculpt work is is so crisp and precise as well as the impeccable paintwork. You can see how we've got some really nice gunmetal silver used here for what appears to be wiring at the top of Overload's head. I also like the incorporation of some yellow highlights for where the nose and of course the two eyes on either side of the head would be and we've got some really menacing mandibles there for the mouth. As we take a look here towards the torso I once again really do love the very angular and aggressive design that it does evoke and we can also see here the faux chest that I mentioned in the vehicle mode although personally
personally, I don't believe this here looks all that bad at all. And considering Overload is supposed to be a massive robot, I believe as far as proportions are concerned, this is pretty accurate. As we take a look here towards the most iconic aspect of Overload's design, here we have the arms. Now, upon first glance, it may appear as if these are a mess. However, everything does have its own way of actually moving around. And in my opinion, it works really well. You can see that for these back sections, this here has been completely painted in a nice gunmetal and the sculpt and detailing there, in my opinion, has come out really nicely. As we take a look here towards this massive claw that looks as if it has the capability of castrating Devastator, this once again too looks wicked and I love how it is indeed articulated, although we'll discuss that later on in the review. We have these very menacing claws that look as if they could chop Autobot's heads clean off. We've got some nice green wiring detail here and then of course here at what I presume are the shoulders. We also do get this larger claw here at the top which hangs over the top of Overload's head. This really doesn't have much functionality other than the fact that it does have a working piston which can of course hinge back and forth. We also do get a hinge here at the top so that can also be manipulated to your own personal desire. As we turn our attention here to the lower torso, this in my opinion is slightly lanky and upon getting this figure out the packaging for the first time, I did believe that the torso was slightly too long and it can create for a rather abstract looking design, although taking into account the overall abstract nature of Overload's design, I'm pretty sure that it will be something that many collectors can forgive. It's just something that I've believed was worth mentioning in this review as it did catch me off guard upon getting him out of the packaging. As we take a look here towards the legs, you can see that the top of the hips there have been painted really nicely and the sculpt work too has come out very crisp and precise. And then of course this area here is on the bulkier side as it does hold pretty much the entire front of the vehicle mode, but for the most part I believe that it's come out rather nicely and you can see some nice sculpt as well as paintwork here for these sections. As we spin around here to the back, they have actually sculpted and detailed the back here, which I think looks really cool. And of course, you can manipulate these sections here in order to create a slightly more dynamic display. As far as articulation is concerned, Overload's head is on a ball joint, although it is slightly limited, so you can get it to look up and down. It can, of course, rotate left to right and tilt side to side ever so slightly. We do get a hinge joint here, which can rotate the full 360. This section also has the capability of hinging up, although that's mainly due to transformation. The main shoulder joint in my opinion is this ratchet joint which can ratchet up and down. We also do get a swivel here at this claw as well as a hinge joint so you can bring that all the way out as well as bring it forwards. The claw itself has got a hinge joint here although this section is indeed static so cannot rotate with that. We do get an array of joints here for this arm how but this can rotate side to side. This section is on a mushroom joint so can also rotate. We do get what I believe is an elbow hinge, a wrist swivel and the claws here are articulated at two points. One at the base which can hinge forwards and backwards and these are indeed individually articulated and then a point of articulation here at the tip. No form of waist rotation, however, due to the transformation of the combined mode, you do get an ab crunch out of this, so you can crunch this here all the way forwards as well as all the way backwards. We do get ratchet joints here for the hips, although very stiff and tight here, at least on my particular copy. There is no fire rotation from what I can see. I have tried to apply some force to this, and personally, it does feel as if I will break it, so I'm not going to force it. So just be aware that he may have a fire rotation, although personally, I would say that it's it's likely that he does not have that range of motion. We do get a hinge joint here at the knee which does have a locking mechanism due to transformation and this here can bend roughly to 90 degrees and then taking a look here at the foot this can rotate the full 360 as well as rock side to side and due to the nature of the back kibble which acts as his heel spurs these two can also rotate in accordance with whatever range of motion you wish to get out of the toes. So overall as far as articulation is concerned for a character of which does have a very abstract looking robot mode design I believe that he is pretty well articulated and as far as the detail and Scott work is concerned, I am thoroughly impressed with what Devil Saviour have put out here for Overload. Here for an Overload size comparison, we have, of course, the Studio Series version on the left and the Devil Saviour version on the right. And both of the designs are very similar, in my opinion, and they must have both been based on the same concept art, as, of course, they are both two-legged and have quadruple arms, whereas some concept art images did have Overload depicted as having quadruple legs and then, of course, quadruple arms. Both of these designs, in my opinion, have decided to go the slightly lazy route. I would have loved to have gotten this Devil Savior version and it had quadruple legs as in my opinion that would have been a hands down winner for probably the entire Devil Savior Devastator ensemble. But as it stands it still is a really nice looking figure and you can see that as far as the detail and sculpt work is concerned the Devil Savior version in my opinion at least is the superior release. Not only in terms of paint and sculpt but also as far as articulation is concerned but you once again do have to factor in price that the Devil Savior version is significantly more expensive when compared to the Studio Series 
series leader. But overall, I believe both of these figures are really nicely done and both of them certainly do have a place in my collection. I would love to know down in the comments section, what company do you believe did a better version of Overload, Hasbro or Devil Savior? Turning to the transformation into the combined form to begin with, you're going to want to take the chest piece, pull this section here forwards and of course, flip the head all the way in. I would recommend leaving this section here out. However, you are going to want to fold up the faux chest. We can take this entire region and pull this section back. Essentially, you're going to want to revert the legs to their vehicle mode state. So clip the knees back into place. We can then take this section, pull this here forwards, collapse the knee pad, and then take this locking mechanism and snap that there as well. Repeat the same process here. So clip that into place, snap that down, bring this section here out and fold that forwards. I would then recommend taking the foot, disengaging this and basically just hinging this here off to the side for now. We can take this region, rotate this entire assembly around until it does snap into place just like so. We can then bring this section down as well. And essentially you're going to want to take this ratchet joint out so that we have something that looks along the lines of this. Once that's done, you're going to want to take this joint, rotate this piece here forwards, then collapse this here in upon itself, and this tab will peg here into this slot. So just clip that in there, and we can begin manipulating the feet later on in the transformation. Repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So bring this here around, rotate this section, hinge this all the way to the top, snap that there into place. Of course, take this hinge here, bring that down, and flip out the ratchet joint. We're then going to want to ensure that this hook is positioned so that it is straight so that we can just bring this down, rotate this around, snap this there and snap that in there as well. Now comes the awful task of ratcheting these joints all the way around once more. So just bring these down like this and of course repeat the same process here. For the opposite side, we can then take the feet, rotate those around like so and of course, repeat the exact same process here on this side. You're then going to want to turn your attention here to the wheels and lock these here into place. We do have these circular sections on either sides of the torso that the wheels should snap into and repeat the same process here for this side. So just clip that in there like so. We can then lift this section here up. I would recommend taking this, hinging that up as well. Repeat the same process here for this side. We can also take these sections and ratchet these all the way back up and repeat the exact same process. You'll then want to turn your attention here to these sections and disengage this, rotate this joint around and then rotate this around as well. And the tab will peg into this slot here. So just snap that in there. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. So disengage that, rotate, the red section all the way around and then bring this section all the way around as well. And once again, lock it into that tab. We can then bring the arms all the way up in an alignment which looks something along the lines of this. And of course, repeat the same process here on this side. So just bring all of this around much like we would if we were going to transform him into vehicle mode. Just bring all this up. And then you'll want to turn your attention to the tab and slot that I mentioned earlier on in the review. Now, as mentioned, this does go in at a slight angle. So just hinge that just like this. And then essentially, you're going to want to bring this entire assembly all the way down until it does lock into these sections. Now, we can then take the torso, clip that there into place to allow for some clearance and bring this here all the way down. And these two tabs should fit there into these slots. Also utilize the ab crunch joint. And then hopefully everything should align up appropriately. Apply some force, snap that into place. We can then take these sections. Now these are supposed to peg into these two ports. Personally, I wouldn't recommend to do so as they are incredibly difficult to actually put in there. And due to them essentially having to stretch in order to tab in there, it can be very difficult to remove them. So I personally would recommend just to leave them like this. We can of course take these claws here, align those up appropriately. These sections are going to hinge out to the sides, the claws will come up and over and will rotate around until we're left with something that looks along the lines of this. And of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. The mushroom pegs do have a tendency to unfortunately pop out, but just hinge that down, take this section, 
bring this here down, hinge these forwards, come here to the back, ensure that that is like this. And there we have Overload fully transformed up into his combined configuration. Now, as you can see in this mode, at least, it really doesn't look all that special. However, of course, it does combine to Scavenger, which then combines to Mixmaster. So we are really beginning to bring Devil Savior's Devastator to life, especially here with Overload. So let's bring those out. And then, of course, I'll showcase how you can indeed combine them. Now, turning to the combination, of course, you are going to want Giant Axe and Split. The instructions do suggest that you actually do remove Mixmaster before combining. However, personally, I haven't really found him to be that obstructive. So just to demonstrate here how to combine them, you can see that we do have a sliding joint as well as a slot. This is going to slide and tab in to this section here. So essentially, I would recommend extending these pieces and trying to get it as in the center as you possibly can. We can then, of course, bring this here back hinge this section out to the sides and then it is just a matter of aligning this here up appropriately snapping that there securely come here to this side and repeat the exact same process so just snap that in there once this connection has been made giant axe is pretty much solidified here to overload it's just that you do have to apply some finishing touches so we can take this section this slot will peg into this tab so you want to angle this here slightly and of course snap that in there we can turn our attention here to this side and repeat the exact same process so angle that slightly tab this section in as well spin around here to the back and these tabs will peg into this slot here so bring this up and over snap that there into place and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side and with all of the tabs securely snapped into place, here we have so far of what is Devil Saviour's Devastator. Now, of course, we pretty much got a sense of how big and detailed this piece here was going to be when we combined both Split and, of course, Giant Axe. However, with the addition here of Overload, you can see that it really is a jumbled mess, much like it was in the movie. And that's not a critique. I actually do believe this here looks fantastic and incredibly movie accurate. You can see how much sculpting in detail we have here at the back, as well as the incredible paintwork. And, of course, when we do peg both Rampage or Skipjack and Longhaul onto this, he is going to be a sight to behold. I didn't bring Longhaul here into the equation as of course I don't as of yet have the second leg so the figure would be one legged and it would be incredibly difficult to actually prop him up and as it stands this figure alone is incredibly heavy so it does make me wonder as to whether or not Longhaul and of course their version of Skipjack will be able to hold up such a heavy piece as of course we have to attach the arms and the figure already feels incredibly substantial but as far as detail and skull work is concerned this is absolutely going to devastate Hasbro's version that they released in the studio series. And so, some final thoughts, once again, another great product by the team over at Devil Savior. I believe that as far as the vehicle mode is concerned, they did a pretty good job. Of course, there is some robot mode kibble visible, but for the most part, it certainly doesn't look that bad. The transformation is by far one of the most simplistic that we have gotten throughout all of these Devil Savior releases. And as far as the robot mode is concerned, considering that it is based upon concept art, I do believe they did a really nice job. The detail as well as the articulation certainly is impressive, and if I had any critiques as far as robot mode was concerned it's that maybe i would have liked to have seen them approach a four-legged version of overload as we have already seen a two-legged version with hasbro studio series version but nevertheless the robot mode still is really impressive and taking a look here at combined form whilst it is probably the most hidden out of all of the combined pieces that we have so far it is a vital element in of course bringing the lower section of the torso including the enemy scrotum and the legs into the equation and without it you really can't combine this figure at all so overall i would certainly recommend this especially if you have picked up any of the previously released Devil Savior products. Although if you are being very selective with what you add to your collection as far as movie verse Transformers are concerned, then maybe this character here can be a miss considering that he really and truly never made an impression on the big screen. If you are in the market for picking this figure up, he is available to order right now over at Heat Toy. And for that, of course, I will leave a link down in the description box below. I would love to know on what you think of this figure also down in the comment section. So please be sure to let me know your thoughts down there. And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.